So um, I do, like she said, we I have the same goal in mind of where I want to show little girls that look like us that you can do and achieve great things. Mm -hmm. You can be confident, smart, sexy, and you can be a little weird, out of the norm, yep. not cookie cutter, you know, and you can still achieve great things because both of us outside of wrestling, we have great minds and, you know, very well educated and everything like that. But we've been through some things in life that have showed us this path that we're on now. And it's like, if we can help bring other people to that side of where we're now at, you know, where the, the pasture is green and, you know, that's what we're going to do. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. What's going on, Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. I am your senior writer and host here, Nikki Bougie, a part of one half of the Salt Shakers, the dominating tag team here at Women's Wrestling Talk. And of course, I'm never alone. I'm always with my tag team partner, the EIC of WWT, Dreon Santana. Honey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I mean, happy yeah. Sunday to everybody here, man. Like, it's a chill day, I will say. But I mean, so we're we're in the building today, I swear. We are in the building. And, you know, at WWT, we love a good exclusive. So we have something very special, very new for you guys today. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. And then we'll get into some other things. Well... Hey. Hey, first what's all, up, hey. everybody? <laughs> first of all, hey. <laughs> vibe check. If you're not vibing with it, don't say nothing. Right. All right. <laughs> so I'm Sahara Seven. I am no stranger to the independent scene of wrestling. I'm Sahara Seven. I am the big vamp queen hottie. I am the international face kicker, the savage beauty. I'm all those things. Um, but I am here today with my BFF and tag partner. Ah, I'm Casey Lennox. Um, you guys have seen me literally everywhere. I'm the sweetest. I'm the sassiest. I'm the model cutthroat. I mean, Indeed. boom, that's facts. So together we are the Vicious, vicious Vixens. Vixens. Yes. <laughs> we love to see it. Love to see it. So like... How is it, you know, when you're when you're with your BFF? Because I know me and Santana before we started WWT, we were friends outside, um, and we actually brought our tag team to WWT. So how is it, you know, being able to work with your best friend? It's fun. Like literally, I feel like we just do everything together anyway. Like we're literally talking every day. So like, it's just an extension of that. Like. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you feel? Oh, I think it's fun. It's like more you're going to more protective mode, like oh, yeah. um, especially when you're out in the ring. It's like you're protective of what you got going on because mm -hmm. that's your best friend, and it's like you don't want nobody to like hurt your best friend, right. and you also want to like make your best friend proud. You want to like carry your weight so that your best friend's not being overloaded. So it's just kind of like one of those things where it's like you got my six, I got your six, mm -hmm. like a bitch. Absolutely. We running out. Running out. <laughs> like, like <laughs> what you what you trying to do? It's like you, you want her, you gotta go through me. Right. Like right. Exactly. Now we'll get more into this announcement a little later into the interview, but we want to start off with a few rapid questions for our guests here at Women's Wrestling Talk. So each of you name three of your favorite artists. Okay. Don't hate me. This is the uh this is the half white girl in me. Britney Spears. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now, right now, I'm like big on. Um, I love Drake. I can listen to Drake all day. Don't judge yes. me. Yo. She's judging right now, y'all. I can tell. All um, day, all day long. All day long. <laughs> um, and then it's a mix between uh, Megan or Cardi. So yeah, I got music just everywhere. Like, don't judge me. <laughs> I didn't judge. I was just quiet. I didn't say a word. <laughs> Um, oh, I guess am I supposed to? Okay. Yes. My favorite, <laughs> number one, all time favorite, everybody knows this, is Prince. I will forever jam to some Prince because, you know, I'm a big vamp god hottie. I'm a <laughs> 90s baby. I, Prince was my. Okay. So it's Prince. <laughs> Prince, I am a huge, 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 huge Russ fan, straight out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Russ fan. 
love that man to death. He's going to be my husband one day. Mark these words. Y'all saw it here. <laughs> okay. Anyway. We're going to tag Russ in this. We're going to tag, yeah, we gonna tag Russ in this. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Tell him I'm ready. I'm ready with me away. <laughs> anyway. And then my third, like she said, um, it's a tie between Cardi and Megan, but I'm more of a Megan the Stallion girl just because she is Southern, homebred, corn fed girl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's where this one. So, yeah. Those are my three. I love that. Awesome choices. Uh, it was somebody I was looking for, but I guess she didn't make the cut. Um, oh, I'm scared who. <laughs> looking for Beyonce. But, you know, it is what it is. I get it. You oh, know. You know. No, I, no, I, like, I love Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah, you see um, right. Open but the like, in, in my YouTube music playlist, Beyonce is not not on there right now. Period. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Beyonce's you know, Megan cool. and Cardi, like, Megan and Cardi for me, like, they bring out my, like, inner, like, my bad bitch. Like, like okay. it's already there, but, like, they bring it out more. Beyonce is for me, like, okay, how can I put this? I related more to Angry Lemonade Beyonce than any other version of Beyonce <laughs> ever. I'm just going to be honest. That's just from my perspective. So, give me Angry Lemonade Beyonce, then I can <laughs> rock with Beyonce. But everything else, I'm like, oh, this is pretty. Oh, mm -hmm. this is nice. Yeah. Oh, this is a song I play for my man. If mm -hmm. I have one, and it's just like, oh, like you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, but like, it's it's very soft and it's very yes. soft girl, soft life. Who mm -hmm. in my era? But I'm not there yet. I'm still rough around the edges. I'm still a like we make it sound like, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out here having we're my not girl trying summer. To, we're not trying to dance for nobody right now. Like, yeah, no, we're just trying to. We trying in and out. We in and out with hot girl summer. We got some <laughs> places to go, people to see that you don't know. Like. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, so what are you guys like favorite TV shows or movies to watch? Ooh, okay. Don't judge. I'm not. <laughs> Don't judge. Because what I'm about to say is going to shock a lot of people. My favorite show is Forensic Files. <laughs> See that? Well, you finish, you finish judging me real quick. <laughs> uh, my favorite show? Oof. Okay. Uh, anything, no, don't be scared. Anything on HGTV for real. Like I'm such a home, not a homebody, but like, I'm so into like fixing things like and what? Like, like everything. <laughs> like during COVID, like we got those little checks and I was just spending my checks on like how to update my house. Right. So that's kind of where I'm at HGTV. Like I can watch HGTV all day. Like literally I went to the hotel last night and turned on HGTV. Like, I want to in two seconds. <laughs> uh, but yeah, HGTV for me, for sure. Anything on there. Now, we talked about a few artists a little later. You know, I heard uh, earlier, I heard Drake, uh, which is one of my favorites. Now, when you guys are traveling, are there any songs right now that you just instantly have on repeat? Oh, my God. We listen to <laughs> Tomorrow, too, with Glorilla and Cardi B. Yes. We will wear that song yes. out. We were literally, going to, like, what, literally. near Miami? Mm -hmm. We was like, yo, we was just hanging out in the yes. window of the car, like, ah! Yes. And then these people Tomorrow were passing. Be it. Yeah, it was, that was it. And, like, people are just passing us on the freeway, and we're just like, ah! <laughs> So, yeah. Any type of, like, feel-good, like, girl yeah. anthem, like, that yeah. just, like, puts the women empowerment in something it makes you feel that sense of pride of being a yes. woman and like you're just feeling it i think my song right now and i listen to it every day is um in a mood like I damn like she in her mood <laughs> like damn she in her mood uh, i listen to that every day now so that's my i think i'm more i don't know i'm more on the ratchet side of things <laughs> because <laughs> My song every morning is Rico Nasty. Thank God I ain't have to smack a bitch today. I wake up every morning and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Thank God I ain't have to smack a bitch today. I am like, yes. Um, I don't know. Because it, it fits. It just yeah. fits my like everyday lifestyle. So I'm sure a lot of us wake up that day and not feel like we have to slap anybody. Because someday we might end up having to smack somebody eventually. Mm -hmm. So thank God we did not have to. <laughs> There you go. Count your blessings. So, you know, of course, you guys are absolutely amazing the ring, but vacation time, you know, like when it's time to go on that vacation, what did you say is like your best vacation destination? I'm a traveler, honey. <laughs> if there is good food, I'm there. So one thing about me, if I'm going on vacation, it's got to be good food. 
good mm-hmm. drinks and I have to be, there has to be some body of water nearby, yes. whether it's a spring, a lake, a river, a beach or something, because I grew up in a, like in a beach town. So I'm a Southern beach girl. And then you have like, I live in Florida, obviously in Orlando, sunny weather all the time. So it's got to be good weather, good food, good drinks and a body of water nearby. So that's what kind of like vacation looks like for me. Work traveling is different. It's always exotic with work travel. But with vacation traveling, oh, honey, I want to go. Like I was telling Nikki, I was like, Nashville, I've been twice. Love Nashville. Nashville got good food, got good drinks, got nice people. and then, But there ain't nobody of water. I mean, you might go to like Fair. a river or something that's a little bit further away to drive. <laughs> but Nashville still got the, the top tier three things. Good food, good drinks, good people, and good weather since I've been there. So <laughs> that's my qualifications for a good vacation. I don't know about my qualifications. I just need a beach for real. Or like, so I like to be in the city. Uh, since I'm from Maryland, we used to go to New York like literally once a month. Um, so I love the city aspect, but I feel like maybe now that I'm older, like I just need like to chill. Girl, Absolutely. I can't do it. Like, too much city traffic. But it has to be a beach. Noise. I can't do like or it has to be it has to be either like a beach or like um like one of those like river walks oh so yeah like it's still like it's still water and it's still like it's just a bunch of stuff so I like, listen, listen i love a good pier now. yes a good pier i mean it. It sounds, i mean y'all are y'all are in orlando so it sounds like you're living in your vacation spot almost yes, yes honey yeah. <laughs> um, now we see TikTok videos and, and crazy phrases going on. What's a phrase that y'all just yell out sometimes when you're just randomly going through your day? Oh, I can't yell my phrase out. <laughs> yes, you can. No, I can't. <laughs> yes, you can. No, um, no, it's not like a um no, I don't know. I just say uh like I say shut the fuck up a lot, like literally all day every she day. She does like even when she's excited, she like, or, like shut the fuck shut up. that shit up. Like, oh, <laughs> she'd, be like, she'd be like, shut the fuck up. Like, what? <laughs> literally, even if yeah. even if I'm not even like angry or like, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> um, so that's what I say every day. Literally, I'm the worst. <laughs> so it depends what kind of mood I'm in. Um, obviously, if it's like funny, like jokes and shit like that, I'd be like, get the furthest fuck. The furthest fuck. I'll say that all the time. I'd be like, the furthest fuck. I'd be like, get the furthest fuck. And everybody always looks at me crazy, like I'm saying something crazy, but I'm like, no, I, I, the furthest fuck. I'm like, the furthest fuck. <laughs> and so, and then um, I'm also known to say like, dude or bruh a lot. Um, and then my favorite, favorite one is like, if, if it's too much going on, like drama and all this other stuff, I'm a quick, don't kill my vibe, don't touch my weave. But like, don't kill my vibe. Don't touch my weave. I like that. Like, Great. I be like, I don't know what, what y'all got going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't kill my vibe and don't touch my weave. We good. Right. I I agree. Um, we we've all grown up in various different eras of childhood crushes and everything. So, like, what would you say was like you were in your era? What would you say was like your celebrity childhood crush? Oof. Oof. I mean, well, he's technically still my crush, though. <laughs> I got two, and they still my crush oh. today, to this day. So my are, okay, <laughs> obvious one is Lenny Kravitz. I've been obsessed with this man my whole life. He's the reason <laughs> he's the reason why I want a black rock star husband, because look <laughs> at him. He's still fine. Okay. <laughs> then what, speaking on wrestling, because, you know, I watch wrestling as a kid. Batista was that was that man for me. Big Daddy Dave. <laughs> oh my God. Big Daddy Dave. <laughs> Big Daddy Dave. And now I'm getting to watch him in movies. <laughs> oh, shoot. The Lord knew what he was doing. The Lord knew. <laughs> Kept that man fine until I got fine. He is fine. So, yeah, that's he's, mine. He's fine. Uh, mine, oh, okay. Mine has always been Paul Walker. Uh, rest in peace, Paul Walker. Um, and then wrestling wise, oof. Uh, <laughs> John Cena has always been my favorite. Stop. <laughs> however, however, when I started wrestling, um, so when I was 18, 
Carlito. Um, yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, he was gay, yo. So, he looks good. Him and Chris Masters. If y'all want to do like a little, you know, intergender, like. Um, <laughs> we got dogs. So he he did a seminar at our at like my school and like everybody made fun of me like literally every day after because I had such a crush on him and he still looks so he fine. fine. What you mean? Uh, I would have been standing there like, yes, sir, you are fine. He is, but fine. you can show you can demonstrate this move to me, <laughs> but you're fine. And I feel like you know he's got a better age. I'm not gonna lie, age like, like wine, wine, him, Chris Masters, Batista. Yeah, no, John Cena. Cena. You can keep that. You can keep yeah. that. Not I know not. Santana will agree with you, but you can you can I definitely know was that guy. Come on, you can keep that. <laughs> you had it. You it was, it was the thug life but you had it too. But you, you know, know how many of us thug life? It was the thug life area. The basic thugonomics. That was that was what got y'all hooked. I'm not okay. Listen, not like I'm in the Marine. I no, mm -mm, I saw through that. I saw Girl, it was a, it was a spell. <laughs> Before we get into a Halloween <laughs> question, I do want to know, is there any guy that you see, like, and I'll go first. I know, like, when I see Ricky Starks come on the screen, I'm I'm literally, like, melting. Or <laughs> or even, like, Trey Miguel, of course, or JDS. I was going to say, where well, you Because you, yeah, you, know you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I see certain guys. And it has, there's much more eye candy now in wrestling than it was, in my opinion, back then, especially way back then. So is there anybody that y'all see, like, today <laughs> and you're just like... Uh, I'll go first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, you know, I guess. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna die. Um, so, <laughs> I've always been uh, Dolph Ziggler gets me. Like, I don't wow. know why. Maybe it's the, he does that, like... It's that. A, he'll swiggle. Yes. So maybe it's like I, I feel like I like white guys. <laughs> you just came to this conclusion. Um, Damn. And then, oh my goodness. Oh, go ahead. Say it. Wait, let me see. Say it. Go okay. ahead. No, okay. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. So Dolph man. and uh, Wardlow is cute. Had Very a crush fine. on him. Very fine. Um, nice person. Very and fine. I kind of like like Swerve. Like he gives off that like bad boy demeanor. Like okay. he knows he's the shit, you know. Okay. So I don't, I don't know. Those are my, those are my people that I'm like, damn. Like you look good. You, man. Oh damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's just go with. Everyone knows I like a good guy with bad news and tattoos. <laughs> Mr. Carly Bravo. <laughs> what up, Carly? What up, Carly? What up, Bravo? Okay, up? so everyone knows, you know, I like a bad guy because I'm a bad girl. <laughs> I'm a bad gal, so I like me a bad man. <laughs> so, I, yes, uh, Mr. Bad News and Tattoos, Carly Bravo, <laughs> definitely. On the yeah. scale there. And phenomenal, um, phenomenal wrestler too. Me and Santana saw his match with Ziggy Dice, and I I will I will never forget okay. there was roaring in that building. Like literally center stage was shaking. Literally. And Bravo and such a match, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It was crazy. They they really him and Ziggy both had they they have such a underrated impression on the independent scene. People really don't know. Like Ziggy, really. I remember going to Ziggy's show and meeting. That's where I met you at Ziggy's yeah. show. And he helped me with so yeah. much. He even gave me like interviews. He let me interview Taya and he let me interview uh, Thunder Rosa. And people like Bravo are, are very essential to the business because in the independent scene, it's so knit tight, but it's not gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, um, yeah, it's very rewarding to see them be great talents, but also great people outside mm -hmm. the ring, too. So give us some more, girl. I'm listening. Yeah, give us some more. Okay. Girl. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the whispering is <laughs> We're so Damn. childish. Damn. We're so childish. This is, why, this is why you can't have best friends in the back. Okay. So I, I had to tell her before I say it so she doesn't look at me crazy. Um, so I think 
that this man is very attractive as well. <laughs> um, I do like him um, as his style and like his personal style and then his per- on-screen persona. Um, I am a big fan of Damien Priest. Damien Priest. He's very attractive. And, and the lifestyle. Man, somebody sees it. He fits okay, but he's actually a really nice person too. So like he fits the rock star mm-hmm. persona. So you know. Anyway, it's funny we, have, we also way. have our favorite wrestler in common, which is Razor and Bone. So we bond with mm-hmm. that. That's um, cool. and then <laughs> I'm gonna do one more because you know, because I did three, because she did three, and I feel bad. But like this person is near and dear to my heart. He's very attractive, but he's near and dear to my heart. So it's like. I know he look good, but don't expect me to be popping out with him at any point in time because that is not the type of tip we're on. He's just very attractive. Um, Sway Archer, who makes gear and is also a wrestler from Canada. That is my that is my booski. I hold him down, but God, that man is gorgeous and fine as fuck. So, I mean, if you all know, whoever watching this, we all watch it. you all know. I'll give you his at at Sway Archer on Twitter, on Instagram. Go mm-hmm. look at it. And he's infamous for wrestling Twitter after dark. I don't know if y'all remember that mm-hmm. when it was popping, but he is. Like Arby said, he got the meats. So <laughs> it was on wrestling Twitter after dark and it's still up there. So if you Google like wrestling Twitter after oh, dark, my. it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> so yeah, therefore I will always I will always go <laughs> him first way. <laughs> always. I love me some sway. Wanting to put that in the notes uh for research purposes. <laughs> 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 All right, so moving on. Um, of course, you know, when it comes to time for Halloween, I know Halloween is like very, very big for like costumes and everything like that. So like if you guys do celebrate Halloween, um, which I think you guys do, looks like it. Um, what would mm-hmm. you say is like your favorite Halloween costume? Ooh. Okay. So since I'm a vampire, everybody always expects me to dress like a vampire for Halloween. And I just love doing the complete opposite uh-huh. and just making it vampish. So my favorite Halloween costume would have to be... Um, and I am so sad because I didn't even post pictures of it when I did it. I might have to redo it just for the gram. <laughs> but um, because I wore it to a work Halloween party and it was fire. I was Isis from Bring It On from the East Compton Clovers. But I was her if somebody had turned her into a vampire. So I had the red eyes and I had like the blood coming down off this with the fangs out. And I had like blood on the uniform. And I was real cute. My hair was done really nice. And I was given ISIS. And I walked into the building like of my like Halloween party and was like, whose house is this? And everybody was like, oh, they got it. And they were like, damn, you made her really scary. Because like, I had the blood. I had the cracks in my face. And so that's been my favorite Halloween costume. I think I think that was top tier. Yeah. That and when I was the devil last year. Sorry. Yeah, because I mean, I'm a devil woman, a demon woman. So. I figured I'd give the people what they wanted. <laughs> I don't even dress up. Oh my lord, I don't dress up that like that. Um, but my favorite, I did a, a cop costume. I know. No, but uh yeah, like this is gonna sound horrible, but anything that's like slutty is what I like. See, with this new Barbie movie I know, coming out, I feel like you should do President Barbie, Issa Rae's President Barbie. Yeah, that's fair. But you should Tracy, make- you would eat that <laughs> down. Well, you know why? Because like, and this is gonna sound horrible. Um, like, I feel like I know I look good in my costumes, <laughs> but then I see other people, and I feel like sometimes like, nah, and it gives me that boost of like, damn, I do look good. Uh, so, <laughs> so maybe that's horrible like, to say. because oh. I, I don't want to put like, no, I'm not trying to put like any other like female down or whatever. Like, if you feel like you look good, like great. Um, but to me, it gives me like a little boost, like, damn. Especially when they have the same good. costume as you. Like, like if you I wear the same good. costume, and then you yeah. see the person yes. wearing the same costume, and like it looks better on you than it did on them. I'm actually okay. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, me and the year that I did that cop costume, me and it was someone in NXT. I forget who she was, but we wore the same exact costume, and like she posted hers, I posted mine, and I looked at her and I was like, hmm. and I was me and I was like, damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember one year I was Princess Ooh. Jasmine. And oh, I was Princess Jasmine when I was a kid. Yes. Ooh, I should do it again. That'd be fun. I was Princess Jasmine, and this was the year I was MCW Women's Champion. Mm. And so I was Princess Jasmine, and I went, we had a show in Maryland, like around Halloween, mm-hmm. and I wore my Princess Jasmine costume to the show. Yeah. Because we were, they were encouraging fans and everybody to dress up. So I wore my thing to the show. I came out and cut a promo as Princess Jasmine. And I made so many Princess Jasmine puns, right? Then I switched into my gear, which looked like Princess Jasmine yeah. gear at the time. And I see that the girl that I was wrestling, who shall remain unnamed, <laughs> showed up in a Princess Jasmine costume. <laughs> and so when, so when I'm cutting the promo... We're standing out there, and I'm talking all this crap. Here she comes down, walks down the ramp in her Princess Jess costume. And we're standing in the ring, and I'm standing there like, bitch, I got on six-inch heels. You got on flats. <laughs> Aladdin is definitely about to get on my carpet, not yours. Oh. <laughs> and I was just oh. like, at that time, I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I know. So I get what you're saying, but. Yeah. That it's just when they show up in the same costume as you, you be like. That oh. is nuts. Um, our last rapid question before, of course, we get out of here. Well, before we get to the wrestling questions, um, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't know. Think about it. Think about something good. Like, what? Well, well, people, I know people are always going to say, like, I want to meet, like, read minds. I don't know. I don't you know what? Good. That's actually not as popular as you think. Really? I wouldn't want to read. I see people like, do it on their face. So, so good. That's how I feel. Or like, I'm cool with like enough people where if somebody's like talking shit, then they're gonna come tell me. So then I don't need to read like somebody's mind. Does that make sense? I would only want to read minds because I want to know like what shit people are talking. But like, if people are already coming and tell me what shit people are talking, why do I need that superpower? <laughs> so what would you want? You I don't fly? know. You want to fly? No. Wanna- I can fly Delta. Delta. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, hey, you might be on to something. You might be on to something, baby, because that's my line right there. I don't oh, I don't know. Do you want me to tell you what I would pick? What would you yeah, what would you do? I would want to be able to if I say something to you, you like if I say, Oh, tell me how you feel, yeah. like you cannot lie to me. You would have to tell oh. me the truth. Oh, that's like funny. I would have a like a truth serum. My words are my truth serum. Oh, trust me, I thought about this. I watch way too much Marvel and way too I much DC. <laughs> and I was like, yo. And I also yeah. watched that talk of like that black girl who she'd be like doing it, like if there was a black character from the hood yeah. in this movie and this movie and this movie. And she was doing the Avengers and she was mm-hmm. like, if there was one more than one uh black superhero in the Avengers besides Black Panther and Okoye. And she was like, mm. She said, well, let me go ahead and squeeze my little tiny ass up in this little stretch suit. And I was like, see, that would be me. <laughs> that be me. I'm like, Mm-mm, pink ain't my color, honey. Y'all gonna have to find another, like, a nice <laughs> yellow or something like that that says super on it. Like, <laughs> that's what I was like. That'd be me. That's why I was like, I definitely know I would want a true serum because, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, because that's my biggest pet peeve. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me because I find that's out fair. the truth. I find out the truth. And when I find out the truth and you lied anyway, Oh baby. Oh, maybe okay. This is gonna sound dumb, but maybe like I wanna say like teleportation or like I wanna like be freaking invisible. I wanna pop up on people and like do some crazy shit. Like, oh, like you can appear and people. reappear, like yeah. yeah. Like I just wanna like like if I was behind you and like I pulled your like pulled your hair off or something, <gasps> like I wanna just mess with people. Yeah, maybe I'm petty. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, invisibility. That'd be great. Because I wanna just like I want them to your I want to be talking. Like, I want to be talking. I want to be popping up. Like, oh, so you want to catch a bitch in the act? Yeah. And then I want to, you know, disappear. <laughs> so, so Miss Appear would be your name. <laughs> Miss Appear. <laughs> Woo. I would want my name to be like Truth Sarah. That I like that. That's cute. I like that. Well, listen, personally, I would just want to stick my hand out and whoever pisses me off, they just blow up. Smell. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Arson. Yeah. And then maybe have like Casey Lennox audio in my hand. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That'd be nice. Um, so of course, this is women's wrestling talk. 
we have to get into things wrestling because, of course, that's what brings us all together. Um, what got you into wrestling? The dire question. We, we really want to know. You want to go first? You go first. Okay. Uh, so mine has always been uh, Tori Wilson in a bikini contest. Um, wow. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't, I used to say that I think this sounds terrible, but to me, it doesn't sound terrible anymore. Like, this is my, like, this is how I got into it. Whatever. Um, sitting up in the nosebleed section at First Manor Bank Arena or whatever. <clears throat> it was like her, Don Marie, Sable. Um, and it was either like a bikini contest or a lot like a lingerie contest. So back in those days, um, it was just her, like how she come like commanded the audience and like her presence. And she like Tori is Tori has a banging body. Like she is muscular. She's not just some like dainty, like like female with no muscle or like, you know, nothing. Um, so for me, it was, it was like, wow, I see a beautiful lady. She's strong. She has, you know, again, all these muscles. And then she had all of the attention from the crowd. I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, so that's what got me into wrestling. Tori Wilson. I love me some Tori. So I was bullied a lot growing up. Um, Cause I'm African and um so I played soccer and I went to a school where they considered that a white people sport and so I got bullied a lot I got picked on a lot um like physically bullied I was not like how you guys know me now um I was very much like I just let things happen to me and just assumed it would get better one of these days without treating people how to um treat me or like how to you know, be around me. And I would just let things happen to me. And so um, I used to get bullied a lot for playing soccer. I used to get called a black white girl, uh, Oreo, all this other good stuff. And then um, then people found out I watched wrestling, even more bullying. Um, they were like, you know, that's not real and blah, blah, blah. Like trying to kill my whole like childhood. And it was like, I used to sit at home and like watch and just, see like these storylines where they had like the underdog who was getting like brutalized and picked on like week after week after week after week and then you keep watching you keep admiring their courage to get back up and keep going and keep fighting and then eventually you know that that underdog is gonna be on top so for me it was like a life lesson of I'm taking all this abuse and this bullying but I need to stand up for myself I need to show people how to treat me and I need to not take disrespect. I need to not allow people to put their hands on me just when they feeling intimidated by me. You know, so for me, it was very much a thing of if these people can get up every week, get their ass beat, keep coming back for more and then like get to the top of the mountain, then I can do it, too. But the person that really got me like hooked, fine sinker into wrestling, there was actually two people. Um, Razor Ramon, Lord rest in peace, Scott Hall. He's my favorite wrestler. Um, he was the bad guy. And when he was the good guy, he was so good at being the good guy. But you forget that he's the, he was the bad guy. But his name was the bad guy. So it, when you have someone who can literally make you forget about all their like faults and there's horrible, heinous acts in the moment and just captivate someone and captivate a crowd like that, but still remaining true to themselves and being cool and just being lots of days of cool. Like he wasn't out here trying to pick fights with everybody. But if you had a bone to pick with him, he coming for you. And that's how I feel in life. It's like, I ain't trying to be out here in everybody's business. I'm not trying to be in the drama. I'm not nothing. But don't come. Don't say seven. Don't say this. Don't say that. Don't, nothing. Because target lock, I'm coming for your ass. Like, I learned that. And then kind of what close to what Casey was saying, Victoria, Lisa Marie Barron, was always that that it girl for me. Like, she, like, I fashioned my whole career after her. Like, finishing move, everything whole career after her because she was just the picture of because I was never pencil thin like some of these other girls and I wasn't really like you know into the whole swimsuit model look I was more into the built physique and strong and beautiful and like when Victoria came out she was just she was in your face she was strong she like rock music which I love rock music <laughs> And it's like, she was an alt girl. Her hair was dyed different colors. She was doing the damn thing. She looked good. She had great power moves. She could pull off. You could see her doing power moves. 
Lucha Moose, she was just doing it all. And it was just like, dang, girl, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but she was still keeping it feminine and keeping it cute, keeping it sexy, keeping it fun. It was like, she was just enough crazy to keep you like, ah, I don't like you. And then she'd be like, oh, but look what I can do. And then you're like, okay, dang, bitch, you kind of hot. Oh, snap, you kind of strong. Oh, snap, you can actually wrestle. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's that kind of like push and pull that both like both characters gave me that like really locked me in. And it was like when I was going through that whole thing of getting bullied, it was like I would think in my head, like, what would Victoria do? What would Razor do? Like, mm-hmm. I've seen this before. I've seen this episode somewhere. It may not be in, in a schoolyard or whatever, but I've seen what this looks like. I've seen what the outcome of perseverance looks like. So, yeah. And then I got, I signed myself up for my local wrestling school. And <laughs> it's a wrap. That's amazing, honestly, that both of you guys' stories of getting into wrestling so different, but a little bit similar as well. So, like, I, I definitely enjoy hearing those stories about what's get people into wrestling because you never know what people actually have dealt with personally that really have someone on a TV screen playing a character that can really reel them in and then this become your life. And now you two are wrestlers and doing the damn thing. So shout out to you two as well. But uh, definitely, you know, dive a little bit more into like your your inspirations. Like, you know, what like you have your Razor Ramon, Ramon, you have your Victoria, you have your Tory Wilsons. But talk about your now inspirations, like really dabbling into like building your own characters and implementing them on the screen or doing your promos inside the ring as well, even down to your, like your gear and stuff. Um, so I'm a huge, my favorite movie is Queen of the Damned. Um, and, uh, I'm a huge Anne Rice fan. Um, I am a goth chick. Um, I'm very much a vamp hottie 24 seven. My car is black. My inside of my house is black. Like you see this little stuff on the wall, but this is the only color because everything else is black. Like everything else is black. It's black on black. Like this little desk y'all sitting on, it's got skulls, crossbones and all that good stuff. I am me, honey. I <laughs> yeah, I am I am who I am. So I really got my inspiration. Like I said, Queen of the Damned is my favorite movie. And it just more so Aaliyah's character as Akasha, um, because one, she's Egyptian. I'm Egyptian. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, and two, she was a black vampire who was basically learning how to man, like move, maneuver in a new world. And so I kind of saw that as, okay, I've been in this wrestling business, but I always been what everybody else wanted me to be. Like I was thin, I was smiley, happy, go lucky, da, 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 da. I did, I lost weight, I gained weight, I did this, I did that, I changed my hair, I changed my outfit, this, this, just to fit what the stereotype in wrestling was at the time. So, um, when I got to, I want to say it was about my like fifth or sixth year in the business, I kind of was just like, I'm over faking pretending. Mm-hmm. Like I'm over it. Like it really does take a train on your mental and it takes a drain on your matches and things like that. It literally will show you like, this is not fun anymore for you. Cause you're now it's taking out the fun mm-hmm. aspect, the reason why you did it. So therefore I just stopped faking and pretending. And I was just like, look, here mm-hmm. I am. I'm the big vamp goth hottie. I like to fight. I like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not afraid of shit. Like, I like to fight. I like to I like to kick people in the face. I'm really good at it. Like, I listen to rock and roll music. I'm not your average, you know, Joe Schmo. I am a baddie. Like, I am bad. Like, don't get me wrong. Pretty face, cute, cute, savage beauty. That's where the name comes from. But, like, this is me. This is who I am. I'm not changing shit. I'm not going to censor shit. I'm not going to. That's it. And so I drew inspiration, like I said, I mentioned before from Victoria, because I felt like Victoria in her like widow's peak freak era, that was her. That was her because I had the honor to wrestle her later on, like down the road on my indie experience. And we vibed over the same things. And like, she was like, dude, I loved it with my color hair. She was like, that was me. She was like, that was how I, you know, she's like, yeah, I was a bodybuilder. She was like, but I wasn't me- meant to be a blonde Barbie. I wasn't, th- she was like, I wasn't built for that. She was like, I was built to be me. And I was like, and here we are. <laughs> and I was like, and here we are. And you expire someone like me who was built to be me. Yeah. And if you don't like it. <laughs> Suck one. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that's kind of where how I've taken inspiration. So yeah, it's basically heavily based on Queen of the Dam because that was my favorite movie and favorite books by Anne Rice. But it's more so inspired by how I live my life every day because I just refuse to be fake. I refuse. Refuse. That's fair. Uh, so mine is, so the sweet and sassy part. Um, She's a Sour Patch Kid. I, I like literally I am. So like I am so nice. And then, like, I can just switch in a second. And I, like, I base it off of the fact that I'm a Gemini. And I'm sure, like, y'all know about mm, Gemini. Listen, I'm not crazy. <laughs> um, so I base it off the fact that I'm a Gemini. Because, like, I feel like I am, a like, a true Gemini. Because I am so nice. And then at the top, like, at the switch of a whatever, I will just get angry for no reason. Um, so I base it off of the Gemini thing. And then, so Baltimore's nickname is the Charm City. Um, and the reason they got that nickname is because Baltimore is, is the hood. Uh, I feel like everybody knows this, um, horrible crime, all that good stuff. Uh, so they named it the Charm City because they were trying to get more people into Baltimore. So they wanted a name that would be like, sound like nice. Does that make sense? Mm. So Charm sounds nice, but like, obviously it's still the hood. Um, so that's also where I kind of get it from, like. Yes, I am. I don't want to say hood because I'm not hood, but like, yes, I am evil or like angry or mad or whatever. But like, there's also charming qualities about me. And the fun fact is we're both from the DMV area. You along are. with our along with our best friend, Renee Michelle. Yeah. That makes yeah. Up, yeah, that <laughs> makes up the whole DMV. Like I wish That's you awesome. Yeah, yeah, Renee's been on the show before. Uh yeah. we interviewed her. A couple like about a year about a year ago and uh her and Spud, i love them so much DC. like they just <laughs> obsessed she's with the them. dc this is the maryland yeah. i'm the virginia D-A-A. <laughs> real connection yeah um now you've got you both have gotten in the ring with so many different impressive women in wrestling um but for those that you haven't gotten in the ring with Name three of your dream opponents, past or present. They could be alive or dead. It doesn't, you know, have to be someone who's actually mm-hmm. still able to wrestle either. So it can be any dream opponents. Oof. Okay. Let's name one and one. Okay, go ahead. You go so first. my my like top is always gonna be Eddie. Um, so Eddie Guerrero is like no matter who he's who he's wrestling, he will always put out such an amazing story. Um, even if it's like the first match in like, let's say they have a storyline. If it's the first like part of their like storyline, he always just knows how to put it together. He like always puts the other person over. Um, not even like, not even in like a winning aspect, but like he'll get them over. Like, you know, coming from like coming from a response aspect of the crowd. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Eddie's definitely my number one. Well, always going to go back to, I want to. Razor, I feel like there's so much like character work there, like that. I feel like it just would come, like it's infectious. Like I watch his matches, it's infectious. It's like <laughs> you know, you know he's gonna like if you bump him, he's gonna sell. Like you just like yeah. hit him with a car. Like it's <laughs> gonna be like it's gonna be so like dramatic, but it's also gonna like snatch a hold mm-hmm. of the audience. It's gonna make the audience believe, oh, you're the you're the greatest good mm-hmm. guy, or if he's the good guy, they're gonna boo you out the building yep. because he's gonna give you that. He might not like sit up here and give you a 20, 20, like <laughs> 20, 25 minute, 30 minute match, like you know, but he's gonna give you like he's gonna give you that like that that oomph you need and yeah. it's gonna be electric and you're gonna feel it because it's gonna jump to the other person because there hasn't been a match that I've seen from him with the other person isn't carrying their weight because mm-hmm. they feel it and like listening to all these interviews you know posthumously of all like the wrestlers talking about him they say that he had that like that little something and he was just such a good guy like that people were willing to like they were like yeah 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 and like <laughs> let's do this and I'm like see that's what I need um so yeah that would be my that'd be my one person who's not here with us today that I would definitely want to wrestle all mm-hmm. right you're right. my next one would be Mercedes. <laughs> um, okay. So, no, just because everybody no, says, say, honestly, okay. like, well, we... <laughs> it's so funny that you say that because when I, I went on Duke, Duke, Duke Loves Wrestling, and he said that me, you, and Sasha, at that time she was Sasha Banks, that all of us looked alike. 
<laughs> and I will never forget, I put your picture, um, because we do turnbuckle glam, and I, I put you as a gym hottie. I, both of you have been on the show, and I, Casey, I, I put you in the gym, and I kid you not, I was like, I thought this was me. <laughs> and I ended up meeting Mercedes, and she's like, you know, they all they they say we all look alike, but I've always do pointed that out, and I knew I just I knew that was coming. So I'm I'm <laughs> I'm actually really glad you said Mercedes my name too. Um, no, I mean, I just threw me for a loop. I was just surprised. I was like, no, I mean, just because everybody, like everybody says we look alike. Um, I don't want to say we have like a similar move set, but like, I'm a big fan of like Lucha stuff. So I'm trying to like get more into that. And I know that she does that like all the time. Um, so I just want to see like, you know, what we can do. Also, come on. She's Mercedes. Facts. Period. Like, period, boo. Yeah. Um, so mine would be Miss Jacqueline. I had the honor of meeting her um, multiple times at WrestleCon, but it was the first time we met her. And I literally looked at her and I just said, thank you for being a black girl and just being out there. And she is a bomb wrestler. I don't know if many people remember. <laughs> she was the Intercontinental Champion. She beat yeah. Chavo multiple times. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm just saying she's a she and she's a tough lady. Like if you go back and watch even her impact stuff, she's a tough broad. She's one of the first ones to get in there and mix it up with the dudes. Clearly, as you can tell, I am not afraid to mix it up with the dudes. I don't care. But um, she just gives off this energy of where it's like, I'm gonna learn something. Whether I know it or not, I'm gonna learn something. Yeah. And I actually did try to talk her and convince her convince her in her retirement stage to have a match with me and she was like honey i'm retired but i will go to lunch with you so i got my little oh, yeah i got my little lunch with her but i did i tried so hard i was working for um world class and it was like it was called iwr before that but it was based out of oklahoma and they ran in like dallas a lot and um dallas austin and all that good stuff and she was coming in as the uh, special guest ambassador. And they were like, we're really leaving it up to her if she wants to wrestle. And then they were like, you know, you want to wrestle her. And they were like, but we'll leave it up to her if she wants to wrestle. If she wants to wrestle, we'll change your match. And we'll get, you know, we'll put the other girl in the three-way. But we'll change your match if she wants to wrestle. So I literally got her number to her hotel room. And I was like, Miss Jackie, I was like, I know you don't know me. I was like, I'm Sahara Seven. I'll be on the show with you this weekend. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you. And when she came downstairs, she was like, she was like, okay. She was like, what do you want to talk? So nice though. She was like, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, okay, Miss Jackie, you've been on my bucket list for years. I was <laughs> like, I really want to wrestle you. And she was like, girl, I don't wrestle no more. She was like, but I will have lunch with you. And we'll <laughs> So I got to learn some things from her, like just verbally that I use in the ring now, mm -hmm. just because of how she explained it and broke it down to me, um, coming from a woman, a black woman's perspective, specifically, yeah. not trying to say there's anything wrong with any other woman, but I'm just saying coming from a black woman's perspective in this business, some of the things that other women can't teach us because they can't, they haven't been through that struggle and they don't know what it's like. They see a struggle, but they don't really know what it's like. But to have somebody who did it, who came out mm -hmm. on top of it, and is still going, yeah, I'll take that information. <laughs> so, Miss Jackie, if you see this again, if you think about coming out of retirement, honey, call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, my last one's. Oh, I feel like my last one's a mix-up. Um, I always say that I want it to be Dolph for the same reason. No, for the same reason that like I pick Eddie. Oh, okay. Um, because he always, like, he's been doing this for, like, over a decade. And he always puts on a banger. And, like, he just had a match with uh, Ali, I think, mm -hmm. on main event. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, literally everybody always says that his matches need to be on TV. Like, I feel like he gets that person that he's working over, like, no matter what. Um, so it's either Dolph, Ivory, or Molly Holly. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I get a lot I, of my stuff from like Aubrey and Molly Holly though. So I love both of them. Yeah, me too. I have only two people in that last spot mm -hmm. um, that are females though. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, males, if we're talking males, I want to wrestle Carly, though. But if we're talking... Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am. No, that's not for that reason. Not no. for that reason. Back up. <laughs> not for that reason, though. <laughs> but um, he's another good character giver. And yes. I've watched him do absolutely the bare minimum in a match. And mm -hmm. it was... It was the best match on the card that night. It was, but for him, it was easy. It was a cakewalk. I mean, I could have did the same thing, but it probably wouldn't have came off as great as it did. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, cakewalk. But mm -hmm. the two females that I have in mind, um, I want to wrestle Jade. I want to wrestle my girl Jade. Mm -hmm. I love Jade. I want to wrestle my girl Jade, Jade Cargill. Um, and then, because I think we would do a dope storyline because I'm not so tiny to right. where she could just right. throw me around and it'd be like, um, like you know, unbelievable that I actually could pull some stuff off on her <laughs> but it would be like it'd be good i'm not saying i'm strong like i'm built like her but right. i would give her a run for her money and i feel like she would she would give me a run for my money and it would be fun because we would just have a blast the whole time because we'd be just kiki in the whole time um but and then the other one is i really really want to give this female a shot because i love her on on nxt and i really feel like it's she's about to blow lash legend oh yeah I really think she's about to blow. Like I'm so, I'm so gun. Like I'm tuned into her. I'm tuned into her. Like as an indie worker, I'm tuned into her because I think I'm yeah. a her. I'm her. Like I'm her indie fan. Like yeah. I'm her indie wrestling supporter. Like I'm her sis. That's going <laughs> those is those is because like I see her and I see how she's working, how she's moving. Right, right, bro. I, I get props where props is due, so mm -hmm. I'm never going to be it. Like she said, a gatekeeper. Like Santana said, a gatekeeper mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. We ain't doing that over here. No, I'm no. about female empowerment, and I see her moving, and mm -hmm. I baby. Come on, Lash Legend. Give me everything. And they need to bring her talk show back, too, because I was I pissed when they took it off, because I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Well, now she's in uh, she's in the, the team with Jakara, which Jakara I know, and great. that's going to be great, like, too. That's freaking great. That's going to be great, too. Like, I'm, I wish both of them much yeah. success. Yeah. But like I said, I've been really tuned in. To, I mean, I really haven't seen much of Jakara stuff. I've seen like mm -hmm. her some of her matches, but I've really been tuned in to like Lash Legend. And I feel like girls, girls a natural born star mm -hmm. athlete. She's got a good look to her. She's still figuring out like you know what kind of like gear she wants to go for, like but everything she, she has rocked, yeah, has looked good on her. So the girl knows. The girl but, like knows. I like I I like her because she's open to changing. Yeah, like. She is, you know, she's not just stuck in what she Sorry, my dog wants is barking. to be. <laughs> <laughs> she's not like, she's not stuck in this one like character, you know? Sorry, my badass son decided to um, mm -hmm. bark in the middle of the shame. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, continue. Hades. Yeah. Hades is terrible. The devil. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, like, um, she's not just stuck in what she started as you know she's like evolving and even if it doesn't work like at least she's trying out different things that she thinks might work which i feel like a lot of people just stay in the stay same stagnant yeah um so good for her you know especially so like she's so new she's and that's so like, new and to be able to like get a girl be willing to to go out there and say oh well let me try this and if it doesn't work whatever like What's the word? It's just not gonna work. Like, and she's just gonna pick it. She's exactly. a star. She's gonna pick up something else exactly. and then keep going. So mm -hmm. she has a different legend. look. Um, yes. Her entrance is who who throws a coat right at the camera at the camera. <laughs> like nobody else is doing this. She's, Bad bitches only. Exactly. Bad bitches um, only. Nah, she's cool. But yeah, no, I do appreciate when girls come in and they come in and they go hard. Mm -hmm. Like she goes hard. Yeah, you can tell she tries. She might not have it all down yet, but she's gonna keep trying till she gets mm -hmm. it. Cause each match I see, she gets better and better and better. So that's why I was like, I definitely would give my last spot to her and Jade yeah. because those are two girls who are new. Like Jade, I love Jade personally. I talking mm -hmm. to her, love the girl to death. Like, sis is very like inspiring and motivational. And this is just coming from personal conversations me and her have had. So, but also watching her work is like I've seen Jade like progress and I love it. I'm always gonna be her biggest fan um on Twitter. And she's also like she's also working, working. Yeah, she doesn't just show up like she doesn't just show up for like shows that we've done that like obviously she's at. She doesn't just show up and like, you know, Google her hair and makeup done. No, she's literally in the ring training before the show is even like before the doors even open. So she's, like she is willing to hone her craft. So like that's respectable. Yeah. So that's what I was like. I do. I see like I see the fakers and the pretenders. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna try to pull out the names. I see the fakers and the pretenders. 
and I they get zero respect from me. Like I still say hi, I still be hospitable, but I see what you, I see how you moving, and you that's why you don't get mentioned on the list that you get mentioned <laughs> on. Like I see how you moving. And um, but I do see some of these young girls that are coming and hitting the door and they're like coming in hot and they're trying. And those are the ones that I would give my last spot away to mm. as people I want to wrestle because child, I've been doing this for a while, but it's still <laughs> like it's still a good like good go when you yeah. get somebody that's new and they like ah, 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 ah yeah. and they're like, yeah, and you're like, OK, game time. And you get excited. It gives a new excitement. Right. to it. So that's where I'm at. I love that. I love all of the responses you guys gave. Um, Jade and Lash, they are definitely those girls coming in. And Lash, you know, I, I miss her talk show, too. I was definitely enjoying every weekly that she talked about dish that was happening. Even when she kicked the hell out of uh, Nikita, child, that was... Child, that was my favorite episode. Yes. When she was like, when she went on a rampage and was telling this girl about her life story, she said, this is what I found out. I was like, ooh. Give me the tea, honey. I was like, <laughs> yes. I was like, we need more stuff like that because stuff like that is memorable. Stuff and it's very memorable. like, like she comes across very real. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't seem like, obviously I feel like it's it's a script, mm -hmm. Um, but she just, she has that ability to make it feel like she's literally just talking like you and I are. Right. Um, so like the, like. Everybody was into that, into that, uh, her and Nikita Lyons, yes. feel like, and her like, feud with like her. everybody, like, everybody they drew you in, them. they wanted to see, yeah, they wanted to see, they wanted to see it happen. Um, so you know, good for her. That's good what I said. She, she's <laughs> doing it in the thing. Lash, we love you. The vicious victions, we love you, girl. We love you. Keep doing the damn thing because we love you. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Jade. You know, you know how we feel. We see you, we, we tell Daddy. you how much we love you. So, um, shout out to her. Uh, shout out to Mercedes too, because you said yeah. Mercedes. So Mercedes does the damn thing. So come shout out to her too. She better come, come back, back soon. soon. Yes, get well soon, Queen. Get well soon. We rooting for you. Get well soon, cause you your war tour ain't done, girl. It no. ain't done. It ain't done. It's just starting. It's just starting. Yeah. It's just a minor setback, honey. It's a vacation at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It That's definitely is it. for her, of course. Um, so, of course, you guys have been in a ring with a plethora of various different wrestlers, but there's always those tough opponents that you run across. Um, so who would you say are some of your toughest opponents, or who would you say was your toughest opponent you stepped in the ring with? Toughest opponent I've ever stepped in the ring with? One of my senpais from Japan, Yu Yamagata, Yoshi Legend. She beat the crap out of me. I still have pictures of it <laughs> and video. She beat the crap out of me. But she made me a better wrestler and a better person um, in and outside the ring because she was so hyped to be, like, wrestling me. Because um, I at first, when I got to Japan, I didn't think that nobody really liked me and all that stuff besides the people who brought me there. And I was like, I didn't really feel like – because, you know, they just didn't know how to talk to me at first. Because of the language barrier at first. But once I learned Japanese and they learned a little bit more English, we were able to get along just fine. But she was so, like, hype. She was like, ah, I love Japanese-American style. Ah, and she was like, we're going to wrestle. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then, like, but she's telling me all this in, like, Japanese-English. So it was, like, it wasn't as flowing as how I'm speaking to you. But, like, she, like, she was just so, the intensity and the hype in her voice, it made me hype. And it made me feel comfort. It made me feel love. And then she ended up adopting me into her little faction in Japan. And I pretty much ran with her. And I learned everything, how to be a bad international bitch from her. <laughs> so she was actually my toughest opponent. Now, a tough opponent that I've had. Sorry, my son is in the background doing weird stuff. Um, that I've had is actually sitting right next to me. Jesus Christ. This woman. Okay, so we have wrestled each other. And I want to say Casey is a tough one to put down. She's a tough one to put down. She's a tough one to put down. I guess it depends. What we're talking. I didn't say all that, but she's a tough one to put down when it comes to wrestling. Like, But the good thing is, like, the times that I have wrestled her, we have had fun doing it and it's always that saying you always hit your friends harder 
Nah, I feel like I just everybody heard her. I'm sorry. No. She, I think she just goes ham on me because she knows I can take it. And then in in that case, when she does go ham on me, I'm like, oh, you bitch, because I'm about to light you up. And she'll run from me. She will run from me. She will run from me. And I'm like, oh, no, you started this turf war, baby. But, yeah, so I can honestly say, um, yo, Victoria, Lisa mm-hmm. Marie Barron, even in her after WWE, that ain't no joke. She's still strong as hell. Strong as hell. That ain't no joke. Um, um, so my trainer, C.W. Anderson from ECW or ECW Original, was the toughest trainer in the States I've ever had. Like, because the toughest trainer in outside states was Yui Yamagata and <laughs> Chibusa Nagaya from from Japan, from Marvelous Women's Pro Wrestling. But toughest state side, got to give it to my to my wrestling dad, the guy who, who literally birthed this beast <laughs> and unleashed it on the world, C.W. Anderson. He did not treat me any differently. He literally said, cool, you want to be one of the boys? You're going to get <laughs> treated like one of the boys. He has this move called a shotgun, and it's literally a step up like kind of like insecurity on the ropes mm-hmm. and it, it, it <laughs> comes and it comes and it comes and it sounds like a shotgun when it hits you so he was like you want to learn how to do the shotgun and i was like yeah sure i want to learn how to do it he's like all right you gotta learn how to take it first then you gotta learn how to do it <laughs> so then i was like cool so i'm standing there imagine me like 21 year old me standing there on the apron, right? We're going through this whole motion. <laughs> I get tossed to the outside. I'm hanging on the hanging on the edge in the corner. And here he comes running in, steps up, wham, and just like foot to the side of the head. Boom. And you just hear like a loud ass smacking oh, noise. No. And that was my head to his foot. There was no hand, there was nothing. It was <laughs> boom, right to the side of my head. And I he I took it i literally buckled i fell off the side of the apron like it wasn't no dramatics it was just my body was just shocked fell over and i was like what the hell just happened and he literally picked me up off the ground and he was like you good he's <laughs> like all right now get jazz back in there and he was like now you're gonna do it <laughs> and he did not take it easy on me at all not one bit <laughs> yeah here little boy <laughs> uh so mine 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 is shorter um Janai kai is one of the most hard-hitting females that I've ever stepped into the ring with. Um, so definitely her. Um, and then uh, Kikyo, uh, I love her. She was one of my first opponents. She like mentally challenged me. Um, so I definitely say those two, Kikyo and Janai Kai. Like Janai Kai be hidden. I love you though, girl. <laughs> but Yeah, she is. She got some strikes. Yeah, like, she does. Yeah. I've never um, been to wrestle her, but I really want yeah. to. She, <laughs> she's, it's, her strikes are just out of this world. Um, from Rhea Ripley to Zelina Vega, and of course, Deanna Perrazzo and Jordan Grace, we've seen a plethora of women's matches. Off the top of the head, what's been your favorite match this year alone? Oh, I, oh, that's like we have to stop our head. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> Girl. <I don't> know. <laughs> I love, um, I'm just going to go with Zelina and, and Rhea since you like brought it up. I love Zelina. Um, like I've known her since I started training. So I've known her as Thea, like you've known her as Thea. Um, like that match made me cry because she's so deserving of it. Like she's been busting her ass for so long. Um, she took a stand for herself. She went back to the company that she took a stand for herself at. Um, and now like one of the top stars um so that's gonna be my favorite match i'm just gonna go with that one this Um, year this year only five months in (laughs) no that's great i mean um recently i if we're gonna go up this year like i have so many but like as of right now i'm still kind of stuck on tony storm versus jamie Hayter, both two (laughs) women that i absolutely adore them both and for the AEW women's title. And I just really loved that match because of this, the capacity of which both of them showed 
that they are capable female wrestlers, even though they've been caught up in this storyline that's like so, you know, everywhere, so many people yeah. involved. Not saying that it's a sloppy storyline. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying there's so many players involved that are mm-hmm. all big name players and key mm-hmm. and they're doing this and they're doing that because, you know, you got Britt Baker, you got um, Soraya, mm-hmm. you got like all these other people, like all these key components. You got yep. Ruby Soho, you got um, uh, who else is in this? this feud um oh Kukara Shida and you, know, oh, yeah, yeah. you got all these these very very key players, key mm-hmm. players and good women involved in this storyline and it was just like so nice for it to like stop mm-hmm. take a second and then just wrestle and it was like pure like women's yeah. wrestling it was like it was like ah uh, capsulate that I mean, also shout out to Willow and um, Willow. Uh, Athena. They did great on that ROH Women's Championship match. Willow, I don't care what anybody say. Willow about to be AEW Women's Champion, or me and Tony about to have it. Willow, out. Willow gonna have all the belts. Yeah, right. <laughs> me, me and Tony gonna have it out because Willow deserves. She does. I don't. I've she never does. met a female that deserves and it works her butt off. She mm-hmm. deserves, and she's still so humble. The sweetest thing ever. Like, but yes, I shout know. out to. Willow and Athena for doing their thing mm-hmm. in that match. So those two matches I've been really, really like like cheerleading for and I like love mm-hmm. talking to other people about it because those two matches are just I wish I could just encapsulate those mm-hmm. and be like, yo, this was a moment here and this was a moment yeah. there. So when people go back to like, you know, some people that make these like greatest matches of 2023 lists playlist and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I really wish people would include those two matches because those are some like slow down encapsulated matches where it's like these bitches can wrestle. Yeah. And those are some great uh choices to say. So like of course we talk about like best matches that we've seen um this year thus far. So what are your go to matches? Like what is your go to match that you just go back and you watch multiple times? My go-to match, my two go-to matches are um, Rick versus, versus HBK, WrestleMania 24. I can watch that match without sound, with sound, um, whatever. Just the storyline or the storytelling in it is phenomenal. And then Eddie versus Ray from Halloween Havoc. Those are my two go-to matches. Like, no matter what, I'm just so, like, invested in those two matches. Uh, mine is uh, Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels, the ladder match. Um can't remember which WrestleMania that was from, but it's like super old, but <laughs> I don't care. It's so great. <laughs> but um, and then um I always go back to um this match, the Hell in a Cell match between uh Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair. I always go back to that match. Like I think it was great. It did what it was supposed to do, it mm-hmm. did what needed to be done, it was good storytelling. That was a good <laughs> match. That's I ain't even gonna favorite. Favorite. That's my favorite match of all time. Not even oh, you feel me? like that match. No, <laughs> they watched that match. Play, like that match was not like top tier. I've watched that watch match top. over a hundred times. I'm not kidding you. I always watch that match. I love that match. The sim, the cinematic value of thinking that Sasha was not going to be able to compete in her hometown is nuts. Charlotte ending with the natural selection after tossing Sasha multiple times over the table. Sasha wig just slide, slide, baby, slide, impressive. but she was still getting the job done. She was that match is the epitome of women's wrestling at that time. I absolutely feel so resonated. Um, I get chills when I go back. That's a that's a I cried when Mercedes debuted in New Japan Pro Wrestling because I felt as a fan. I was never going to get to see Charlotte and and Mercedes get in the ring again. And I'm still fearful of it, but I need it. They they have one of the greatest feuds in women's wrestling. And so you saying that, that's that's my number one. I like watching that match. (laughs) Yo, that is a match, honey. That. Yeah. Like I said, I get props to females who give yeah. who get it done, and I don't yeah. mind sitting up here telling people I sit at and home and watch other matches done. other than myself. Yeah, I am not one of those people. I watch everybody's stuff. If if yeah. it's entertaining, I watch everybody's stuff. Yeah, I like mean, Mercedes always gets it done. She never does. a bad match. No, but also no. Bailey gets it done too. Bailey does get it. Very done. underrated. I love Bailey. Yeah, I'm sorry that match between her and Sasha was good at Takeover. <laughs> like let's. 
that was good too. That takeover was it Brooklyn? Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. god, mm -hmm. that was now. Crazy. This is gonna be the first time that the vicious vixens are really being put out there as a tag team. So a few part questions that we have, we need to know when is the debut and what do you plan to make? Like, how do you plan to make your impact? And then lastly, we need to know why are the vicious vixens the ones to watch in 2023? Okay, so, well, the debut will be, because we can't really give the data away too soon, but we yeah. will just say the end of June here in 2023 will be the debut of the Vicious Vixens in the ring. Um, and, you know, we'll be doing our thing. Mm -hmm. um, why are we, how, what do we, what was the question? I'm sorry, I like, like left. What, what impact do you want to make on women's wrestling and professional wrestling in the indies just as a whole? I mean, so I just want to, like, as a singles and as, and as a tag team, I just want, like, my goal is to always uh, let people, whether it's little girls or, or guys or whoever, like, let them realize that they can they can live their dream. You know, they can do what makes them happy. Yeah. Um, I want to prove, like, as a competitor that, like, I know what I'm doing, that I'm improving, that, like, I'm strong, I can fight, like, you know, stuff like that. Um, what are yours? So I just want, I'm, listen, <laughs> we want to make ourselves known as a top tag team. That is yeah. our goal uh, at the end of the day. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, I do, like she said, we I have the same goal in mind of where I want to show little girls that look like us that you can do and achieve great things. Mm -hmm. You can be confident, smart, sexy, and you can be a little weird, out of the norm, yep. not cookie cutter you know and you can still achieve great things because both of us outside of wrestling we have great minds and you know very well educated and everything like that but we've been through some things in life that have showed us this path that we're on now and it's like if we can help bring other people to that side of where we're now at you know where the the pasture is green and you know that's what we're gonna do um but i also want to put it out there that you know also, and I think I've hinted at this multiple times to my women of color, like mm -hmm. <laughs> this struggle that we go through, whether it's corporate, whether it's entertainment, whether it's whatever sports, like athletic things, uh, mm -hmm. business, corporate, whatever. Don't count us out. Don't count us out because mm -hmm. we are so capable of like we're in, you know, we're so much more than they mm -hmm. make us out to be like. You may be a girl from the hood, from the block. You may be a girl from the hood in, in Baltimore. Or you mm -hmm. may be a girl from a beach town girl who's weird and a goth girl from Virginia Beach who don't right. really like the sun like that too much. But, um, you know, you can still level up to these great things and mm -hmm. achieve these great things. And then you can also link up with other females. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to always be fighting each other. We can also link up with right. other females and celebrate each other and then help each other get to the top. So there's also that message I just want to, mm -hmm. you know, put out there, especially for, you know, my women of color. I'm going to keep repeating that because <laughs> it's so important. No, it's so important. These no, I know, days. I know. We, need, we need representation everywhere we go because there is not just one set type right. of person in each yes. industry. Yep. There is multiple different faceted types of people in each industry. So it's just like if we can be that the, those two in this industry to show that, you know, we're here, too. And then some little girl sees, oh, they're just like me. They're just like me and my best friend around the corner. Right, or right. They're just like me and my best friend in pre preschool. Right. They're just like me and my best friend, you know, from college. Whatever the case may be, that gives them the inspiration to get up, go mm -hmm. do it because you're not done. You can't just sit there and lay there and take exactly. it. Exactly. You got to. You gotta get up and you gotta like, get, you gotta up, get and up and work and you know like get you it can do yourself. it. You can rise to the top. Like you don't stay at the bottom all the time. Cream rises yeah. to the top. You you gonna be on top. You gotta put it in your mentality that you mm -hmm. are cream. You are cream. Just mm -hmm. like the vicious vixen. We believe we top tier. We are definitely we top shelf, top tier, all that. We mm -hmm. we never giving you we never right. giving you the bottom. We not giving you the bottom of the barrel. No, we giving you top shelf, top tier. 
Period. Period. Well, so listen. Facts. We know what it means to be in the time. And that's not a, that's not that's my own period. That's, that's on straight, straight facts. facts. Yeah, we love that. Well, we know what it takes to be outside of the ring and be a tag team, but it it, it applies to in wrestling media as well. Seeing women of color, especially black women, be able to be given these platforms and give platforms to other people is very important to us. Now, before we get out of here, are there any things that you want to say, any last words or anyone you any tag teams you want to call out, any specific promotions you're looking to oh, any specific promotions? I know we would love to see you in Impact Wrestling, but here's your shot. Um, you know, say any last minute words and then end with letting everyone know where they can find you on social media. Listen, I would love to go to Impact. Um, I would love to honestly go anywhere. Like, I really want to work the Renegade Renegade Twins together. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm always open to working the Renegades again. I always. love them. Always. Love them. <laughs> I love them. Um, no, they're bright stars uh, like in this business. So I would love to, you know, step in the ring with them like together. We'd have a banger of a match. I would love to work the Iconics. Mm. Yes. The, the Iconics. What is it now? The Inspired? Inspiration. The Inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, I can't call them the Iconics anymore. The Inspiration. I well, love them. <clears throat> I mean, who knows? Because, I mean, they I'm are the Inspiration, but they haven't been wrestling. So, who, know, who knows to say? She, they, she's saving it up for a good one. That's what she yeah. does. She gonna do her big one. She yeah. just, she just had a baby. She said, "I'm about to pop she out and do my baby." Big one. She did yeah. just have a baby, and she, she did, she just did a wrestling signing. So you know, it's she, she, out of the question. Yeah, she's coming out. She's gonna pop out and do her big one. I have faith. <laughs> I have faith. Yeah. Um. So yeah, definitely uh, a match with the icon. Yes. Um. I definitely look. I'm gonna put this out there because I believe in manifesting. <laughs> Mercedes, go and get up with Trinity and Impact, and let's do this. Like, let's go, on, <laughs> let's go ahead, let's go ahead and give them a real taste of the black girl magic, honey. Yeah, let's go on ahead and stir the pot up a little bit. <laughs> you know, Impact, if you want to make this happen, because this is actually money, but um, <laughs> it's on the <Impact>. table. <laughs> Impact, <laughs> money on the table, and then um. I mean, I don't mind. I don't have a problem with wrestling Kylan King and Taylor Wilde. I really don't. No. I like Taylor Wilde. I respect her. Yeah. I just, Great style. And, um, I've worked Kylan numerous times, Same. and we literally have always had a banger. She's so smart. Very. Uh, very, yes. very, very smart. So mm-hmm. freaking smart. Um, and she always, like, she will... Literally, if you feel like you're down here, she will bring you all the way up here. Yeah, I, I love her. Personally, she's, um, she's a true Taurus. We are birthday. Yeah, that's why I love her. <laughs> so we're I love twins. her from our NWA days when we did um the NWA Empowered. Yeah, um, Kylan was like she was one of the people that I hung out with like yeah. after because we was just we was on a vibe and she was a vibe and so <laughs> I was like oh, we about to vibe all night. <laughs> so yeah. That is pretty much, I think that's my list as of right now. I mean, um, oh, I forgot. We forgot. Jakaria and Jakara. Jakara. I said Jakaria. Jakara and Lash. Jakara and, 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 and Lash. Yeah. Yes. So I would, they are now a newly founded yes. thing. Come on, add to the, Let's just make this a triple threat, baby. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> Tornado tag. Let's go ahead. Let's let's get this. Because we need to just give it all the black girl sauce. Yes. Yeah. You need to um, do uh, do an undisclosed location. <laughs> all black girl magic. Uh, match and I have do want to show up. I do want to work uh, Marty Bell and Allison K again. With Same. You. I was going to say, I, I worked them for NWA and Power and I had fun. Yeah. I love yeah. AK and Marty to death. I yeah. respect AK so much because she's giving me advice as well. So She's giving me so much advice. She's a, she's um, a, she's a. Dream. She's great. She's a dream to work. She's a yeah. dream. She's gonna be a legend in her own right. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, as far as I mean, should we tell everybody since we already like told them about the tag team? We should just go ahead and them? drop the news again. Yeah, go ahead. Exclusive. Okay. You heard it here first. Women's wrestling talk. Exclusive. Take it away. Oh my god. Okay. You're louder like than been, me. I'm not quiet. Yeah. Right I here. feel like I've been talking. Okay. Yeah, but you're louder, so you can like. I feel like I've been talking. Drop the exclusive. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but um, so the exclusive is the Vicious Vixens will be out here. We're going to drop our merch. There is going to be a trailer. There is going to be so much. It's going to be an interactive website that you guys can mm-hmm. communicate with everything. us on. You can 
basically <laughs> do everything. We're trying to roll this out as a experience as, you know, we want you guys to basically feel like you guys have your own version of a best friend tag team, like to where if you guys, um, for instance, I know for me, I want to make it a big point that if you're feeling low, you know, drop us a little email, drop us a comment, and, you know, and we'll get back to you with some encouraging words and things like that, because I'm a really firm believer in, you know, no one should be down. So we want you no, to feel like right. you guys have a, a gateway to like reach out to us. I mean, if you come with some hate, we don't come, say we nothing. We're coming back with the hate. Yeah, don't say that when we put you on blast on social media. Because <laughs> I'm not the one, nor the two, nor the three, honey, because I don't play. <laughs> Find somebody else to do it. But, um, yeah, so we want you guys to um, be able to interact with us, and we would love to see the love. And we're going to have, like we said, we're rolling out the merch. So we do have the first ever yep. Vicious Victions t-shirt T-shirts. coming out. Um, it'll be available in black and white. And um, also, we're going to have crop tops and yeah. We'll have prop prints booties. and, and autograph yeah. stuff, like literally just everything. We're going to do a so, giveaway. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do yeah. a lot of stuff. Um, but I really want everybody to tune in, too, because we're going to drop this trailer. We work so hard to do because we're going to introduce ourselves. I mean, you guys know us as individuals, but we're going to pretty much give you guys an inside look into what it's like to be our best friend and what it's like to be our tag partner <laughs> and um this is it i feel this is it <laughs> this is it like glued to the hip this is it um but basically it gives you a inter look on the sugar and spice and the everything the, not nice. and, and everything not nice <laughs> and the good and the bad the happy the sad mm. the tweevils the twin evils um <laughs> You know, pretty much. Um, and we'll leave it up to the viewers to decide which one is which. Yeah, which one is the, which one is the sugar and which one is the spice. I can already I already know. Sugar. Okay. The sugar, so since, you, sugar. since you said Sahara. <laughs> Casey Casey has this demeanor. And it's funny that y'all sit on this side because <laughs> I feel like me and Casey are very similar and Santana and Sahara are very similar, but it swaps with personalities a little bit. And I feel like Casey and Santana are like, we're a heel tag team. So there's no sugar. Like we are both cutthroat. We're like, honestly, Sasha and Bailey during pandemic. That's that's what we, we like too. So to see the balance in the Vicious Vixens is going to be so interesting to see. If you are watching, make sure you check out the trailer that's coming soon. And also, if you're booking PW Revolver, XPW, Derby City Wrestling, there's so many great independent. Derby City, promotions. come on now. Derby City, so I can drive. Listen, Derby I can. City. I've been hearing good things, so Derby City, come on. Oh, yeah, they're great. I, I'm going to grab Santana and put her in my trunk. And she's going to just <laughs> come on to Louisville. Louisville has some of the best wrestling in the world, in my opinion. Um, so if you are booking and looking for new hot tag teams, make sure you check them out. And before we get out of here, of course, you can follow me on Twitter. You can find the Dreon Santana on Google. And of course, you can continue to follow us on all things at Women's Wrestling Talk Pod. New website coming soon. Make sure you check it out at www.talkpod.com. And check out the Vicious Vixens because they will be making their dominating debut very soon. We thank you so much for tuning in to Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.
Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.